what's up divas and what's up divas of course you know it is already wednesday the week has gone by so quick and as you already know it is time for real talk wednesday of course so if you guys are interested in a real talk episode about your life or your need advice you can always send me an email here at muffin is my lovers 2012 at gmail.com please make sure to put in the subject line real talk and as well as that if you'd like to change your name in the email to say your name is lucy but you want to be called april you can go ahead and say you've already changed your name to such and such so that way it's a done deal so as always, in case you're wondering about this hair that I'm rocking, I did wear it last Wednesday for Real Talk, and this is still the same hair, which is simplyvirginhair.com, um, custom-made unit by me, which was highlighted and on a highlighting cap over two and a half years ago. So I absolutely love this freaking hair. It, like, gives me life. Like, for real, this hair gives me, like, the serious life that I need because the color is so pretty, and I just feel like a totally different person in this. So, yes, you guys can check out my website if you're interested in a custom unit. Also, if you're interested interested in an in-stock unit that is already made, video units, brand new units, you can check it out, goingwiththewindwigs.webly.com, and I'll post that information for you guys below as well. And as for the necklace, which is such a statement piece, and I am loving it, you ladies know I love any type of statement jewelry, especially when it comes to necklaces, because I'm kind of like insecure about the scar that is on my chest, so it kind of like camouflages it and hides it from me. Um, I've gotten used to it over time, but sometimes people ask me, what, what happened to you but it's that and it really like pisses me off like wow you have no filter like I don't have any filter but goddamn you don't even know me like that so so it, it kind of camouflages that for me and it makes me feel a little bit better about how I feel about myself so yes so let's get on to this real talk shall we April, love your channel and advice for the Real Talk Wednesdays. I'm dealing with a dilemma right now about whether I should get a new car or rent an apartment that is close to my job. My name is Melissa and I am 24 years old. You can call me Melissa. I just graduated from college and I have a good job as an afternoon teacher. My job pays $14 an hour and I only work part-time. With that being said, I have tried to save up as much as possible, but I'm not sure if it's in my best interest to move out of my parents' house and get an apartment close to my job, or should I wait on the apartment and get a new car? The car I currently have is a 1998 used Acura, and it has issues of breaking down from time to time. Sometimes I'm nervous to even drive it up the street because I'm not sure if it will be able, if I, if it will be able to make it. My job is an hour away, so driving to work takes a toll on my car, but I have no other transportation. With the apartment situation, I am living at home with my parents, and I feel like a failure for not having my own apartment. I know this sounds a little harsh, but I see everyone my age moving out and getting their shit together while I'm still living at home and having to tell my parents where I'm going and asking if people can come to the house. I know the saying, their house, their rules, but sometimes it gets frustrating. Can you please give me a solution on this problem? Thank you again. Love you, Melissa. So Melissa is in caught in a rock in a hard place she has a dilemma she lives at home and she is an afternoon school teacher which pays $14 an hour she's in a dilemma because she does have a car which is pretty old it's 98 and it's a 98 Acura and she works an hour away so she's scared about getting to work because her car may not make it however she did find an apartment that's close by her job which she probably wouldn't need a car for or a vehicle for however she's kind of feeling some kind of a way because her friends got their shit together they done moved out what have you yada 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 so here's my advice first of all melissa never worry about what everybody else is doing that's good for your friends that they got their shit together and they moved out and they moved on to the real world whatever who's to say that you ain't got your shit together and you ain't moved on to the real world just because you see what's good on the outside does not really mean it's good on the inside meaning yeah they might have moved out but how do you know that they're not struggling on paying rent electricity, cable, water, car insurance, groceries. You really don't know their struggle. A lot of people put on this front sometimes where they make it seem like everything on the outside of their world is golden. But when they get behind them closed doors, they crumbled up in a corner and they really don't know what they're going to do, how they're going to make it. Some people live check by check, day by day, week by week. And that's how it is out in the world. This is reality we're talking. So yeah, you may see your friends making it, but you really don't see your friends making it because you don't really know their struggle. So my advice to you, you want to move out, 
but you're only working part-time and you're making $14 an hour. Part-time is not eight hours a day. So even though you're making $14 an hour, it really doesn't still accumulate to a full-time job. What you would basically need to be able to afford an apartment, electricity, maybe water. I'm not really sure about your state, but a lot of states do charge water. However, you will need enough money to pay for your bills, your utility bills, your groceries, as well as your apartment. So my suggestion to you is continue staying at home until you can land yourself a either another part-time job or a full-time job where you don't have to struggle so much. Get yourself a car so that way you can seek another employment. Maybe find something that's just full-time to where you don't have to drive an hour away. Or if it is an hour way at least it's full-time it is so worth the travel me personally if my job was part-time and I had to drive an hour to and from work which is two hours I'd find me something that's full-time so this is my opinion or this is my advice to you look for a job when you're not working that's full-time that you can afford to move out and in the meantime go ahead and get your car and make sure that you take care of home first meaning you do live at your parents house yeah that's fine who's to say that we got to move out when we 18 19 20 21 let me tell you something if i knew what i knew today i would have stayed with my mom a whole lot longer than what i did i left at 19 because me and my mom did not get along so basically i left and i didn't have means of transportation such as a vehicle i didn't have a job i was on welfare and i was struggling so i had to go live with a roommate and i'm gonna tell you this much melissa it is not fun struggling and trying to figure out how you're going to do this and going to do that it's really not cool so yeah it is their house and it is their rules and you gotta abide by them and that's the same thing i say to my, in my house because you can't be in somebody else's house and be disruptive and distract disrespectful and having chaos going on you have to set rules and boundaries for anyone that's in your house and that goes with you as well melissa when you move out you want to have rules and boundaries for your house and that just goes with anyone so in the meantime my suggestion would be for you is to seek a better employment it's great that you are a part-time teacher however let's get it to full-time let's get that car going you ain't got to buy no extravagant off the lot off the chain whip okay but get you something that is affordable is gas efficient and will be able to take you to and from seeking an employment okay like I said your friends they may have it together but this is what you see the grass is always greener on the other side, okay? And I tell people that all the time. They always feel like, oh, April, you got it made. No, bitch, okay? I don't always got it made because I got bills to pay to and I got kids to take care of and I got food to get um, and feed my kids. So just because you see people on YouTube and you feel like their life is golden, it ain't always like that. Every day is a struggle for each person, okay? Whether they raking in the dough from YouTube money or they working and they get money it still is a struggle i have my own business so i make sure that shit stay popping so that way i can afford to pay my bills and pay for things i'm not saying i'm gonna go out and buy a freaking jaguar or a bmw or a mercedes or a rolls royce but I'm going to shop efficiently and budget friendly because you guys already know my ass is a cheapskate ass all the way okay regardless of how much money i make i'm a cheapskate ass but I had those issues too where I would see other people like wow they got this or wow they, they got that many views or wow they doing it and you know what when you keep watching and keep looking at what other people are doing it kind of stagnates you okay some people may find it as motivation because it can be motivation but if it's constantly bothering you and you're putting your own self down about what these other people have and you don't have or what they got together and you ain't got together then it kind of depresses you and stagnates you so so what you need to more or less do is focus on Melissa. Focus on what Melissa needs to do with her shit to get her shit together. Because your shit is together somewhat, but if you really want to get your shit together, then what I would suggest is go out and find you a full-time teacher job or another part-time job to where you would be able to afford an apartment. Because trust and believe, girlfriend, you take your little ass out there and get an apartment now, it looks all golden on the outside. And then when the time rolls in, when you need cable, electricity, water, groceries, car insurance, you ain't going to have shit. And then you're going to go back home to your parents. I would never want to leave my parents' house and have to go back because that would be like the walk of shame for me. I mean, yeah, people do have to do that sometimes. Shit happens. Sometimes we lose our job and we can't make it on our own. We have to go back home. But 
Why? Alleviate that problem and get your shit together to where you don't have to go back home. So, for now, my best advice for you would be to get yourself a new car and drive yourself to your part-time job. But drive yourself to some job applications where you could get a full-time job. That's just it. Bottom line, that's how I feel about it. You know, you move out, then you got a car. That's You move out into an apartment and you got your old 98 Acura. And then what? You pay your money to get it fixed and then it breaks down. And then how are you supposed to get around? You know what I'm saying? Yeah, your job is closed, but what about the grocery stores, your parents' house, other jobs that you might be seeking employment for? Now you ain't got no ride because you just paid your rent with your part-time $14 an hour job, okay, and your light bill, and you can't get your car fixed. So you're either going to have to take public transportation, which is not a bad thing, or you're going to have to call one of your parents and ask them, Hey, Mom, hey, Dad, you think you can loan me some money so that I could pay for my car to get fixed? Which really sucks because now you have to make sure to give your parents back that money and now you're broke. So, I'm just saying, get yourself a new car. Don't go all out getting buck wild and crazy. But make sure you take care of home. And that is your parents' home. So, it is, it is considerate to let your parents know where you're going and when you're coming back. Because you live with them and they are concerned. And it's not cool to just walk out the house. Same thing here. I have a husband, or a fiancé rather, and if he's leaving to go somewhere, he's going to tell me, hey babe, I'm going such and such, and I'll be back at such and such. That's what you call consideration, okay? That's what you do in a relationship, regardless if it's mother, daughter, father, son, what have you. It's what you do when you live with somebody in general. And I do the same thing, babe, I'm going to Walgreens down the street, I'll be right back. I wouldn't just dare, I would never just walk out, even if he's sleeping because he works nights, even if he's sleeping, I would still wake him up and say, you know what, babe, I'm going to go to the store. Because what if he woke up or what if something happened to me? So it's part of being considerate. It's part of being an adult to let the person know where you're going. If you're living by yourself, then I guess you ain't got to tell nobody. But even if you had a roommate, be considerate because you never know what can happen. At least they know where you're going if anything happens. Okay? You know what I'm saying? So on that note, let Melissa know, Divas and Divas, what you would do in a situation if you had to choose. I'm just saying, that's just my advice. I'm trying to do two, I mean three, but there's no way I'm going to get to three. Because I have 18 minutes left on this camera because I already recorded a cheapskate haul video. So let's get this rolling. Hey girl, I just want to get this off my chest. So I've been married for almost two years and before marriage, we have been together for three years before that. We've been having a lot of problems. I don't even know how to start with it. Let me just say I feel alone most of the time. Every time I tell him how I feel, he gets offensive or just never knows what to say and always just goes to sleep and knowing I'm upset. How could someone say they care and act this way? We also, we also just been through so much together and times get really hard. I also have a hard time trusting him because he used to take my money without me even knowing when when I would check my account and catch him buying stuff without my permission I almost even divorced him but I believe he was going to change like he said so I gave him another chance but I don't see I gave him another chance but I don't see any change only thing I he I don't he don't get money from okay let's see hold on I believe he was going to change like he said, so I gave him another chance. But I, I didn't see any change. The only thing, he doesn't get any money from me anymore, but it's still hard trusting him. We also, we also go to marriage counseling, but I feel like he is not putting any effort or showing any action. We always also have trouble finding a place to hang out, like dates or whatever is always a mission. He never knows where to take me, and before marriage, he was nothing like this. He really changed, and I don't know who he is anymore. Is is like he's never been with the, oh it's like he's never been with a girl before it's so frustrating and what also kills me i still think of my first love and i miss talking to him so much i think about him almost every day because after our breakup we still remained friends for eight years he really understood me and he was a best friend to me but last time my best friend texted me with a strange number saying crazy things like he really hates me and he told me he wished he had never met me I have even tried to message his brother, and I've told him to, to tell him to stop texting me bullshit. He told me, his brother told me to screenshot it, and I did. He also said, that's not my brother. He doesn't use that type of language, and he knows his brother. That meaning he was saying hurtful, disrespectful stuff. 
Shit really hurts my feelings, so I just left him alone, even still wondering if it was even him. Anyway, I haven't spoken to him ever since. I'm just very confused about my feelings. It's really hard to move on from him. I don't know why and how long it's been so long. Hopefully I get a response. Okay, so we're going to call her Megan. So Megan basically has been married for two years. Prior to that, she's been with her husband three years. So they've been together five years total. There's no kids in the equation because she didn't say anything about it. But he's one that she doesn't trust. He stole money out of her bank account. He says he's going to change. He takes her out but doesn't know. He doesn't really take her out because he doesn't know where to go hang out with her and take her out on dates. But prior to him hanging out with her or marrying her, he used to take her all types of places. But now it's like he has never been with a girl, so he's acting kind of funny. On top of that, Megan is feeling some type of way. She's got these feelings still deep inside for her ex-boyfriend, who is basically like a best friend to her. He's always been able to communicate with her. She's always been able to talk to him. But the last situation that she's received a text from her ex-boyfriend, which was from a stranger number just basically saying things as he wishes he's never met her and yada 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 and her ex-boyfriend's brother said that it's not his brother he would never type anything he doesn't speak like that so she's trying to figure out why her husband is acting like this he'll go to sleep upset and not say anything to her he won't talk to her he'll get upset if she tries to communicate with him and she just feels alone and depressed alone and depressed okay alone and depressed so she wants to know what to do about it because they've already gone to marriage counseling, but he seems to not put in any effort. I'm going to tell you something, Megan. First of all, a lot of people think that marriage counseling is always the key to everything because you're sitting in front of someone who doesn't really know you guys um, from a hole in the wall. Yeah, you sit there and you talk your problems out and they give you their medical advice, meaning the advice that they've learned to tell you guys when you've had a problem. My advice on marriage counseling is I went to one like many years ago. That shit didn't work because my ex-husband was sitting there and talking about, well, don't tell him this and don't tell him that and don't tell him I sell drugs and don't. Well, what the fuck? Don't tell him I be in the streets all night because I have, you know, why I've been in the streets all night. Well, what the fuck is even a sense of going? Because I don't want your business out there. You don't want your business out there. You're not really putting in any effort and I don't really want to fucking be there with you anyway. I really want to sit there alone and just talk shit about you because I can't stand you. So that's how I really feel about marriage counseling. You go in front of a counselor and you really can't spill the beans like you want to. You really can't sit there and say, I fucking hate his guts half the time and he's a fucking asshole. You really can't say that because you try not to say that, okay? So going as a couple to marriage counseling, I don't really think it always works. People use that as their last resort. And I have yet to see people who have used marriage counseling save their marriage like that. It does work for some people, but for those whose marriage is just like really on the verge, then I don't really need a mediator to fucking tell me that I don't need to be with you. I don't need anyone to tell me that I need to leave you. I don't need anyone to tell me that I need to be with you. It's all up to how I feel. So I don't really need any biased person, any mediator sitting there listen to us discuss our fucking problems. If you cannot discuss these as a couple and as grown adults together, then I don't really know what it is. Maybe you guys need individual counseling, not marriage counseling. Because these counselors tell you things that is written in stone what they have learned. Some of it may be from their own past experiences and some of it may not be. More than likely, it's from work experiences, meaning the things that they have learned. My thing is, when you want to talk to somebody about your problems or issues that you are having, the best type of person to go to is a person that's already freaking been through the situation, has already experimented, and has been through it. Let's say, take for example, somebody who's a drug addict. You go to a drug counselor. This counselor has never used any type of drugs in their life. They don't even smoke cigarettes. They've never been around anyone that uses drugs. They've been a bookworm all their lives. They don't even drink, okay? So everything that they've learned about telling you not to do drugs is basically from a handbook or from watching a tutorial on TV or something job-related. So, of course, they can give you some good advice, but it's more or less book-related. Now, as far as getting advice of not being a crackhead, I think the best thing to do is to go to someone who's not a crackhead anymore, who used to be a crackhead, who used to be a drug addict. You know what I'm saying? They have more experience. They have more hardship to share with you. They can tell you and share and relate the struggles with you, okay, opposed to someone who doesn't really know, okay? And I tell my kids this all the time. You guys are in some bullshit. You do dumb shit, okay? Yeah, it's cool to talk to someone, but sometimes you have to go to someone who already knows. I take, for example, myself. 
I'm not a marriage counselor, I'm not a therapist, I'm not a life coach. But I can share with you my situations and the things that I've been through in life. So that way you know the struggle and you know not what to do. I share a lot of my shit with a lot of people and I have no qualms about it. I don't feel any type of way. Because if it can help you in the long run, then it can help you in the long fucking run. Now as for your husband going in your account, stealing your money. Girlfriend, I've been there, done that, okay? And I say this because I used to give mine, my ATM debit card, to go and get money out so that I can pay the electric bill. I said I, because I paid 80% of everything, okay? And it's already bad enough that I'm paying it all by myself, but for you to go and steal 40, 50, 60 bucks and think that I wouldn't notice it is really fucking creepy, okay? Like, you're really a low life. Your wife is already paying all the bills. Then for you to want to go and steal money from her, you ought to be ashamed of yourself. That's sad to say that you can't trust nobody. And if you really can't trust the person, then what's the sense of even being with them? If you can't trust your money around them, then why are you with them? I mean, money does not make the world go round and money does not make a relationship. However, if you cannot trust the person, then there's a really no need to fucking be around them. And as far as your ex, well, if you're still thinking about him and you have feelings for him, then there's got to be a way for you to reach out to him. If I were you, I would reach out to his brother again because it seems like that's worked for you and he could be your mediator and he could probably get you in contact with him. What I'm thinking is he texted you from a strange number. His brother already stated that that's not how his brother speaks and such and such and such and such. So, hmm, who really did text that message? I'm wondering, was it your husband now that texted you that message from a strange number? Have you ever tried to call the number back? See, this is the thing with people. They constantly want to text, 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 text. But you cannot pick up the phone and be like, hey, um, texting to some people is so much easier because they have no means of communication. They've lost, a lot of people lose communication or are not able to communicate with people really well verbally because they're so busy texting. While you're busy texting, I'm busy calling because I really don't want to read what you wrote. I want to hear your voice and I want to talk to you verbally. So instead of you texting him from that strange number, why don't you call it and see who really answers instead of reaching out to other people and finding out is this what he wrote? Some people get a little nervous. Man, please, pick up the goddamn phone, dial the number, because if he fucking texts you that bullshit, you best believe, you ain't gonna text me no bullshit and talk about, I wish you never met me, I wish you were dead. If you text me some dumb shit like that, you best believe I'm going to fucking call you and call you out. Never disrespect on a text message. That's some lame ass shit, okay? Now, as far as your husband going to bed upset, and he's knowing you're upset, one thing I've always learned, you never leave or not say goodnight without telling the person you love them because that person may not wake up in the morning or they may not come back you never know what's going to fucking happen to a person so regardless of how you feel the situation ended if y'all still on disagreeing terms you haven't reached a resolution you still should tell the person you know what i still love you i love you good night or i love you and i'm leaving now goodbye i'll see you later that's just how you do things you don't just leave them and not speak to the person if your husband can't communicate and he gets upset and he's throwing tantrums like a fucking two-year-old because he can't can't communicate with you then maybe he needs to go to counseling and maybe you need to go to counseling to leave his ass the fuck alone i'm sorry but i've been there for way too long and i had to hold my money keep my atm card on me because of situations like that like you taking my money you got a job you're not making a lot but you're still taking my money you stealing my shit meaning my cigarettes when i was smoking at the time it was like a bunch of shit and it's a headache and never want to be around somebody who don't who just don't trust you know what it's a huge world, and there are plenty of men out there, okay? Some of them are good, some of them are bad. Women, some of the women are good, some of them are bad. But why settle for less? Why fucking make your life, your short-term life, and I'm going to say short-term, meaning because life is short. You might live until 80. You might think that's a long time, but time goes by real fucking quick. And why allow your short-term life to be fucking miserable? Because misery loves company, and one month of misery can seem like a fucking year of misery. Trust and believe, a day or two of misery can feel like a week to a month, because you fucking miserable, and that's all that's going through your mind is the bullshit, and the bullshit, and the bullshit. So, my advice to you, Megan, get your shit together, okay? Stop worrying about... Who's texting you bullshit if you really want to find out who it is and you really want to speak to him? 
pick up the phone and use it as a fucking phone, a verbal fucking way of communication, not fingertip, fingertip. You know what I'm saying? Call, call, because you're only going to get your point across like that. And as far as your husband, you don't give him any money anymore. Does the motherfucker got a job? Because if he's stealing your shit, going in your accounts, and he don't get money from you anymore, does he have a job? I mean, or is he not making enough? If he don't have a job, I hope he's getting some type of SSI check. I hope he's getting some type of income. Because if you are carrying all the weight, girlfriend, wake the fuck up and stop being dumb. Because as long as you keep allowing it and as long as you allow him to use you, he is going to use you and suck your ass up dry till you ain't got shit left. Trust me, been there, done that. My ex owes me at least like $25,000, okay, from all the bullshit that I put up and done for him and bailed him out of. Do you think that I'm going to hold my breath for that money? Because if I was, I would fucking die right here on camera because I ain't going to get a damn cent back. So, I've learned my lesson with carrying a load for others, especially when it comes to a sexual relationship or a marriage relationship or just a relationship in general. It's always nice to be with someone and feel loved. However, if they're using you, then you're not really being loved and you're not with anyone. You're just being fucking used and it makes it even worse for you because you're still alone. No one likes to be alone. Everyone wants to be in a relationship because we love companionship. We want someone to be there. However, if that person is fucking with you mentally in your mind, why the fuck even bother? I guarantee you, once you let go of the bullshit, because there's no reason to hang on if it's not worthy and it's not trustworthy. But once you let go of the bullshit, your mind opens up into so many different things. And life seems like you're floating on clouds. Like, that's how I feel. And I don't know if it's because I moved to Arizona or if it's because I'm divorced now. But I just feel so free. You know what I'm saying? Like, so free, so carefree. I feel like I'm just like floating. And yeah, I got struggles too, like everybody else. But as far as my love life is concerned, I'm good. I'm free. I don't have to be bothered. And even if I wasn't in a relationship right now, like before prior to this, I was alone when I moved here. And I did one companionship. And of course, I started missing my ex-husband. And I started talking to him again, which was like a no-no. And that was because I was alone. And I had nobody else to speak to. Nobody else to companionship me. And even though he was hundreds and hundreds and thousands of miles away, I was still alone. And even that conversation on the phone worked for me. You know what I'm saying? But over time, I realized, April, he's no good for you. Leave him the fuck alone. His companionship ain't worth shit. Okay? So, sometimes we got to be alone to get ourselves together and that's just how it is and that time for me alone without him got me together so much I was able to accomplish so much and I was able to find the perfect person for me that loves me truly and always loved me so take time for yourselves ladies and gents and get your shit together don't just jump out of one relationship to another because it's not gonna work for you you got to take time for yourselves. A lot of bitches don't like to take time for themselves. They just want to be a thought and fuck everybody. As soon as they get out of a relationship, they got to get into a new one. Oh, I met such and such. Bitch, please, go sit your fucking ass down in the corner somewhere and read a fucking book and get your shit together. Write a journal of your life. I've always used and kept journals, and it was always helped me because I could relate back to it and read back to it. And it helps me because I see how my life is now versus what it was then and how miserable I was then and unhappy. You know, I wear a mask just like everybody else does. I will come on YouTube with a mask on and feel like everything was great or let you guys not know, but I wore a mask. And now I'm fine with not wearing a mask because if some bullshit pop off, I'm about to let you guys know this motherfucker is out the door, okay? But it's not like that here, so I'm happy. So, leave me making your advice down below, and as always, stay diva and devolicious, and I will see you guys on my next video. Make sure you rate, comment, and subscribe.